So, uh, my name is Vanessa Branson and I am president and founder of the Marrakesh Biennale. Uh, I have been working in the contemporary art world for um, all my working life. Um, I had a gallery in, uh, from 1989 to 90, uh, oh, sorry, 86 to 91 and um, I've since then um, been a sucker for the arts and always worked with, with contemporary art. art. I'm John Nash, I'm participating in the Marrakesh Biennial, organised by Vanessa. Uh, I'm, I'm an artist, I graduated a few years ago uh, in London, that's, that's about it. That's about it. So what is the Marrakesh Biennale all about? Why did you initiate it? I think it's for the first time, as uh, the third time next year, right? The fourth time, actually. Fourth time, I'm sorry. Um, we started in, in, in 2004, I was sort of uh, incandescent with uh, okay. frustration. Um, by the anti-Islamic feeling um, that was emanating out of the Western world. And uh, I have a hotel in Marrakesh, um, and I'd had a very positive um, experience with um, uh, Moroccan people and people from North Africa in general, and I wanted to sort of rectify the balance. Um, I was also aware of, of um, the need for um, uh, that part of the world to find a, 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 a platform for expressing their views and creativity. And so I started the, the Biennale. I'd, I'd, I'd already um, started an arts festival in the UK in Portobello. Um, and so it's something I could do. And um, by, you know, I really, I really believe this, by using the arts as a, um, um, to debate quite contentious ideas through, yeah, you can really get to the nub of a, a point. You know, if you're talking about women's rights or something um, head on, it can be a bit offensive. If you're talking about um, somebody's role in a movie or a book or, 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 or um, indeed an artwork, um, you can really, really get right into the subject. So, uh, 2005, we held the first festival and it was just so um, exciting. And, um, and so, we're now on our fourth. Um, uh, for, for event. Yeah, you were just saying, and this is actually also where you come in, that the next uh, Marrakesh Biennale will be also kind of huge online event. Why are you doing this? Why are you moving? Or why are, why are you including the virtual world? Yeah. Well, the virtual world has come to us. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, um, uh, it would be foolish not to. And, um, 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 the, the, the virtual world made it possible to do this. I mean, our, our curators are um, based in London, New York, Berlin. The exhibition, the main exhibition, is happening in Marrakesh. Um, we get, you know, the, the website is um, becomes a sort of um, extraordinary portal for people to investigate what we're doing exchange ideas, debate, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's a living event even even before it's happened. It has a life and, um, and, it, and it's, it's very exciting. But this is really John's, John's uh, uh, yeah, the, the audience is huge and that's made up of people who will go and see the show, but it, it's also people who will see that, see that online and I think we're quite aware of that, how, it's, how, it, how it exists online and as separate to how it exists in the space. That's, that's exciting for me. So how has the internet influenced your work as an artist and then your work as an, you know, as somebody who's collecting arts, who's making festivals and... It's funny, I mean, I, I was born in 86, so I kind of, I, I was raised by the internet. Um, and for my generation, the, the, the rules have changed. I can, there's, 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 I can explore the world from my computer, I can... Uh, I have friends who earn thousands and thousands of pounds mining gold in computer games and then selling them to people. So this kind of the internet just brought into play a whole new, whole new set of, of, of uh, dynamics of which to which to explore. And so whether it's making work through Google Street View or exploring digital painting software and and seeing what I can get out of those, um, it's also provided a a platform. So there are artists who's who produce work, who produce websites as artworks and get millions of hits a month and far exceed what their show at the MoMA would, would get. And so, I mean, I think it's my generation and the generation before me who would, 
who are spending most of their time trying to work out what the implications of the internet are. And it does seem to be something that's more than a, a new sort of step in technology. It's, it's, it's a lot more than kind of television was. It brings into play feed, like feedback and it's kind of uh, introducing new realities in a way that, that sort of television and uh, telephones and canvas painting and frescoes and cave painting kind of seems to have gone into a new realm uh, of development which is exciting, so it's a good time to be alive. Well, I was born in 1959, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so uh, you know, I, 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 you know I'm, I'm always surprised by the internet's infinite capabilities, and just on a very prosaic level, we, you know, we'll probably have a thousand people coming to the Biennale for the opening um, events, and, um, We'll be filming, we do lit literature, we've got some wonderful writers, filmmakers coming as well, and so all the conversation-based and talk-based events will be filmed and go up onto the website. And then for the main exhibitions, um, all of the information will be up there, people will have an app to, to go, so the, the, it'll be very information-rich, um, as well as visually very exciting. And, um, well, I'll let you know, we'll probably get uh, 60,000 people all through the exhibition over the three months that it's up, and we will have many millions of visitors online, so it's, um, you know, it, it, it opens up a massive, massive audience. How has this, I mean, the, the relation to the audience does completely change with the web, doesn't it? Yes, well, that's John's thing. I mean, I, it, it, it's not my generation. I don't. I love being there and, and seeing things, and, and, and I, um, I'm not. I'm, it, I, it's not my. I don't speak the language as well. And, but, but spending time with the younger artists who do, I can see that they have a very comfortable relationship with what the people at work and why. Yeah. It's, it's sort of it's twofold. There's one. There's the dissemination. So there are tiny galleries in Mexico City that. I look at on a regular basis, and the other the other dynamic is um, is just re yeah recognizing that that's that's the main platform and making work that's tailored for that. So there are artists that there are whole groups of artists that simply make work that looks good in JPEGs, but take that but embrace that as a as a as a as a practice as a as an operating mode, like like Raphael who we talked about, and um, I think that's yeah that's fascinating. So you said you had a conversation before I arrived, kind of preparing this interview. What were the questions or the topics you raised to the young artists and the other way around? Well, I, you know, honestly, I find it really exciting and it was great. Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity for um, doing a bit more investigation into um, um, uh, the, the you know, creative world in the digital era. era. But, um, you know, I... I um, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm just beginning to have my eyes open to the infinite possibilities. I mean, you know, with, um, um, you know, whether artists are responding to the uh, internet or whether they're actually using it as a tool to push their work even further in, and um, and this is all all the, um, the, the, the conversations we were having before you came. And, and, um, you know, I, I, I don't think we've even begun to investigate this. Um, what are you learning from this? Let's let's call it somehow the old world or the older world. Well, we were talking about this again before, and whether you can put it in terms of whether you can contextualize it in terms of uh, early developments. So going from painting on a ceiling in Venice to painting on canvas, and I don't think I think a lot of things haven't changed. So a lot of things you can view in those terms. Um, I mean, the references are still there, for example, so I've made work that strongly references uh, American um, romantic painting, or you can see uh, lots of examples of abstract painting from the 80s in America coming through in a lot of digital painting people are making. Um, and th but I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of it is a complete overhaul of traditional models. Uh, how you get work out there and how you make work and a lot of it's quite mind-blowing that artists who are building their own social networks and having and sort of manipulating characters within these and 
yeah, it seems to have been a, a, a leap, but then that's just a reflection of, of a leap in technology. Yeah. How does this online and offline world reflect, is it reflected in your work as an artist? Um, Or is there purely this, this online presence? You take something out into the offline I think it's world. harder and harder to draw a line between them. Um, it's, I take great pleasure in pulling things between the two, and so, but um, yeah, I think, I mean. Explain to um, Eureka about um, your project in Marrakesh, because this is, this is, um, distills the on and off beautifully. So the, the project for the Marrakesh Biennial um, comes from uh, an, an internet phenomena that I stumbled across in Marrakesh, well actually on YouTube, um, which sees Moroccan guys filming themselves doing burnouts or drifting cars in circles and uploading these with certain key words. Um, this, is an, this, is, this is an example of virtual space allowing something to happen that can't really happen spatially. And um, you end up with these subcultural groupings under suggested videos tabs of keywords like drift or tuning, bring these groups together. Um, and these sit alongside more official, uh, traditional footage of camels and sand dunes and berbers. And, and my intention was to first recognize this, but also take it offline and, and, and bring it into the ex exhibition space and create a similar, a similar flattening or a similar contrast. You have the, You have the, the palace where it's been shown, which is very traditional, and then you have a, and you have this youth-driven subcultural phenomenon. Um, so that's that's been really exciting to, to explore, and my intention is to produce a huge amount of video and participate in that, steal steal that aura. So there's, there's a lot of sort of feedback and imitation. There's often these videos are just imitating uh, the film Fast and Furious, and so that's that's where the unique feedback qualities of the internet particularly interesting you can you can not only get information but you can contribute back so um, and that keeps going and you end up with these weird sometimes dark and horrific but also fantastic situations um, so yeah it's been fantastic to, so to does this on. actually mean that the oeuvre is never ever done finished no I don't yeah I don't think so like you can huh? you, you, yeah you keep going it keeps going you just keep going it doesn't feel like it's a dead end you know Yeah. Uh, the last question, Vanessa, would be uh, what are for you, I mean, you were trying to say that you don't have this much experience with the internet, that it's not your generation. Uh, now, including and embracing the, this virtual world in the next Marrakesh Biennale, what are the biggest challenges for you to do so? Is it The understanding is it? What is it? What what challenges you most by by including this this new world in the uh, in the Biennale? I, I don't see it so much as a challenge. I see I've just got to surrender to it and um, It's an exciting embrace new dimension. it. Yeah, and learn. You know, I mean, I I I don't really get Twitter still. I mean, I do I do it. You know, just to send it off. But I, you know, it's sort of. Um, um, No, I, I, I find it exciting as, as the possibility. But what I, I want to, my primary aim is to make a really beautiful, interesting, stimulating event in real time. And it's up to uh, uh, John and my colleagues to spin it off out there into the, into, into the, into the into space. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was lovely.